The US Department of Energy claims that it has solved a major bottleneck to higher energy density lithium batteries. Here's what they have to say. Let's see if it stacks up. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel on the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to the new subscribers. Welcome everyone else. And thank you. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Really appreciate your support. It's been wonderful to have you here on board over the past, what, about 12 months since this channel started. And during that period of time, we've created more than a thousand videos. Most of that really is thanks to your support, thanks to our support from Patreon members. If you want to be a Patreon member, I'll put a link in the description below. And also thanks to our YouTube members too. Now, if you do join YouTube as well as a member, I'll put a link in the description you get access to some of our videos a few days in advance. Researchers at the US Department of Energy's Argonne National Laboratory have a long history of breakthrough discoveries with lithium ion batteries. Well, at least that's what the US government would say anyway, because they said those exact words. Now, many of these discoveries have focused on a battery cathode known as NMC, which is nickel, manganese, and cobalt oxide. Batteries with this cathode now power the Chevy Bolt. That's not saying a lot, is it? Uh, yeah. Anyway, don't get me wrong. The Chevy Bolt's a perfectly adequate car. And it's a very, very good deal right now. If you can get your hands on one for the price that the MSRP, then yeah, excellent deal. Now, Argon researchers have made another breakthrough with the NMC cathode. The team's new structure for the cathode's micro-sized particles could lead to longer lasting and safer batteries able to operate at very high voltage and power vehicles for longer driving ranges. Now, obviously, high voltage can potentially enable higher energy density and also faster charging speeds. We now have guidelines that battery manufacturers can use to prepare cathode material that is boundary free and works at high voltage. Khalil Amin from Argon Distinguished Fellows said, the present day NMC cathode has posed a major barrier to operation at high voltage, said Gulang Shi, assistant chemist. With charge, discharge cycling, performance rapidly declines due to cracks forming in the cathode particles. For several decades, battery researchers have been seeking ways to eliminate these cracks. Now, I should point out that the, the US Department of Energy says this, but it's not really quite true anymore. I mean, for example, is the video that I made about the guy who has a Tesla Model 3 who's just done more than 520,000 kilometers. Well, I think it was about 4% battery degradation. So you can see that actually cathode technology has been significantly improving, even with standard traditional cathodes. But, 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 if you look at what's happening with lithium ion phosphate batteries and them using manganese and other metals in the cathodes, while well, they're also working on ways to solve this challenge there as well. So there's not only one angle coming. So this challenge of having a longer lasting, better performing cathodes is one being worked on by many, many different companies. One past approach to improving cathodes and preventing these cracks involve micro scale spherical particles consisting of numerous, much smaller particles. The large spherical particles are polycrystalline with differently oriented crystalline regions. As a result, they have what scientists refer to as grain boundaries between particles, which cause cracking upon battery cycling. To prevent this, Xu and Argon colleagues had previously developed a protective polymer coating around each particle. The coating surrounds the large spherical particles and smaller ones inside of them. A different approach to avoid this cracking involves single crystal particles. Electron microscopy of these particles indicated they have no boundaries. What does this mean? Well, the problem the team faced was that cathodes made from both coated polycrystals and single crystals still form cracks with cycling. So after each charge, discharge of the battery, tiny cracks, eventually begin to form. So they subjected those cathode materials to extensive analyses at the Advanced Photon Source or APS and Center for Nanoscale Materials or CNM, Department of Energy Office of Science User Facilities at Argonne. Basically the United States government is saying, we're doing a lot of work on these cathodes. We have advanced facilities which are solving the challenges of battery cathode technology, which it appears as though they actually are. Different X-ray analyses were carried out at five APS beam lines. And it turned out that what scientists had believed were single crystals, as evidenced by electron and X-ray microscopy, actually had boundaries inside of them. Scanning and transmission electron microscopies at CNM verified these findings. When we look at the surface morphology of these particles, they look like single crystals. 
said physicist Wen Yun Li. But when we use a technique called synchrotron X-ray diffraction microscopy and other techniques at the APS, we find boundaries hiding inside of them that we did, that they previously didn't know were there. So this new discovery has led to a new way of looking at how to address this problem. Importantly, the team developed a method for producing boundary-free single crystals. Testing of small cells with such single crystal cathodes at very high voltage showed a 25% increase in energy storage per unit volume, with almost no loss of performance over 100 cycles of testing. By contrast, over the same cycle life, the capacity declined by 60% to 88% in NMC cathodes composed of single crystals with many internal boundaries or with coated polycrystals. In other words, this is a huge discovery. This change really does change the game. 25% increase in energy storage per unit volume is enormous. Calculations at the atomic scale revealed the mechanism behind the capacity decline in the cathode. According to nanoscientist Maria Chan at CNM, compared to the regions away from them, boundaries are more vulnerable towards the loss of oxygen atoms when the battery is being charged. This oxygen loss leads to degradation with cell cycling. Our calculations showed how boundaries lead to oxygen release at high voltage and therefore performance decline over time, said Chan. Eliminating these boundaries actually prevents oxygen and thereby improves the cathode safety and stability with cycling. Oxygen release measurements at APS and the advanced light source of Department of Energy's Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory actually supported this finding. We now have guidelines that battery manufacturers can use to prepare cathode material that is boundary free and works at high voltage, said Khalil Amin, an Argon Distinguished Fellow. And the guidelines will apply to other cathode materials besides nickel, manganese, and cobalt. A paper on this research appeared in Nature Energy. In addition to Zhu, Amin, Lu and Chan, Argon authors included a bunch of other names. I'll put those in the description below. So what is Argon's Center for Nanoscale Materials? Well, the Center for Nanoscale Materials is one of five Department of Energy nanoscale science research centers in the United States. Premier National user facilities for interdisciplinary research at the nanoscale supported by the Department of Energy Office of Science. Together, the NSRCs comprise a suite of complementary facilities that provide researchers with state-of-the-art capabilities to fabricate, process, characterize, and model nanoscale materials and constitute the largest infrastructure investment of the National Nanotechnology Initiative. The NSRCs are located at the Department of Energy's Argonne, Brookhaven, Lawrence, Berkeley, Oak Ridge, Sandia, and Los Alamos National Laboratories. So there's actually a lot more happening in the United States with battery technology developments than what people realize. And a lot of that is actually coming from the government. The US Department of Energy Office of Science's Advanced Photon Source at Argonne National Laboratory is one of the world's most productive X-ray light source facilities. The APS provides provides high brightness X-ray beams to a diverse community of researchers in material science, chemistry, condensed matter physics, the life and environmental sciences, and applied research. These X-rays are ideally suited for explorations of materials and biological structures, elemental distribution, chemical, magnetic, electronic states, and a wide range of technologically imported engineering systems from batteries to fuel injector sprays, all of which are the foundations of our nation's economic, technological, and physical well-being, says the Department of Energy. Each year, more than 5,000 researchers use the APS to produce over 2,000 publications detailing impactful discoveries in battery technology and solve more vital biological protein structures than users of any other X-ray lights source research facility anywhere in the world. APS scientists and engineers innovate technology that is at the heart of advancing accelerator and light source operations. This includes the insertion devices that produce extreme brightness x-rays prized by researchers, lenses that focus the x-rays down to a few nanometers, instrumentation that maximizes the way that x-rays interact with samples being studied, and software that gathers and manages the massive quantity of data resulting from discovery research at the APS. Now, clearly this technology is what enabled the Department of Energy and the researchers working there to discover what was really going on at the micro scale, at the micro particle scale of the cathode. Now, this is the information that people previously didn't know. No one in the world knew exactly what was going on in these cathodes at this level of scale. They'd never been zoomed into at this level. But as a result of this new information, 
This is going to mean researchers have a huge opportunity to drastically improve energy density and cyclability and life cycles of battery cathodes. What is that going to mean? Ultimately, a big increase in energy density. It's not going to happen tomorrow. It may not happen next year, but eventually it will certainly happen. My friends, this is good news. This is the kind of technology that changes the world. More and more of this is what we need. More and more money will be invested into battery technology, cathode technology, improving material science in batteries. And that will mean a better future for us, for our children, for the electric revolution, and ultimately a better planet. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.